Alright, today is Monday, April 5th, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. Before I start, I apologize if this video sounds a little rushed, but I'm trying to get the content out for you as soon as I can. Currently, my house is a construction zone, and it is very hard to record the content. And for all of you inflation deniers, wait till you have to replace copper piping in your house or oh, you're gonna become an inflation believer so fast that's all i'm gonna say but back to the market today we saw interesting activities and let's revisit the two routes the stock market is debating taking route number one of higher inflation which will push yields higher and place reopening reinflationary and value stocks in favor route number two is not very concerned about inflation and therefore in this route we will see lower yields technology technology, stayed home and growth stocks in favor. Last week we had a shortened trading week and we also happened to have portfolio rebalancing. So we did not take the movement of the market last week seriously because everything was pumped higher. This week however we are anticipating more clarity on which direction the market will take because we know that pumping everything together is not sustainable and the reason is the macro outlook meaning inflation and the impact that inflation has on treasury yields for now treasury yields have been stable trading higher but still stable no impulsive movements higher as we saw a few weeks ago but as we receive more macro data regarding the jobs report and today the ism services index and last week we received the manufacturing index all pointing to higher inflation so we are waiting for the next breakout higher in yields once that happens we will have more clarity that the market will take as expected the inflationary route but for today's activities, something very interesting happened. We saw yields stable but higher. We saw the reopening stocks catching a bit. The inflationary stocks also catching a bit. Value stocks, similar story, catching a bit. What about the other route? Stay-at-home stocks, not doing so hot so today. Growth stocks, not doing so good today. However, technology stocks, specifically the big five, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Facebook, had a pretty decent trading session and these five names alone managed to uplift the Nasdaq to close higher today now I do work in capital management so let me let you in an inner secret I was emailing some of these portfolio managers the big ones who are managing 300 400 500 million dollars and I'm asking them what are you doing this quarter what direction are you taking because I discussed the two themes the two route with them the inflationary outlook and my expectations of where the market's gonna go meanwhile we we saw during portfolio rebalancing that everything caught a bid, so I wanted to get more clarity. These portfolio managers are receiving more cash than ever each quarter because there is an abundance of money supply, there is an abundance of savings moved to be deployed in the stock market. And of course, these portfolio managers, they have to buy 30% bonds, and that's what they did. They bought 30% bonds. For example, if you had an inflow of $100 million, $30 million was spent buying bonds. 70%, $70 million in this case, was spent buying stocks. What did they buy? Last November, they bought a lot of reopening stocks, a lot of the value names, inflationary stocks, in expectations of a massive wave of spending from the Biden administration. So they already overweight that side of the market. Now they have 70%. In this case, $70 million that has to be deployed in the market. And during the portfolio rebalancing, they did buy ETFs, lots of ETFs, international, but specifically buying the dip in technology ETFs, specifically the big five names, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook, with heavy concentration toward Facebook and Google. In essence, these managers are chasing whatever value they can find, quote unquote value because they're already overweight value reopening stocks and inflationary stocks. So it's a game of Tetris. You gotta fill where you're low and their technology holdings were reduced during the correction we saw the last few weeks. So they did buy these technology ETFs. Now, are they bullish? Are they deploying the capital in technology ETFs because they're bullish? They see the macro outlook as favorable to technology? Of course not. They know that yields are going to rise higher. They know that we're going to have inflation perhaps more persistent than the Federal Reserve is presenting to be. But the question is, 
where else are you going to deploy the money? The reopening stocks, most of those already trading above their pre-pandemic highs. The inflationary trade also in mania levels. Take a look at a chart of Caterpillar, for example. So where else are you going to deploy the money if you have 70 million dollars and you have to fill it somewhere you play the game of tetris you look at which sector of the market that underperformed the last month or so and you fill the money right there whether that is a wise decision or not that doesn't matter to them because these managers will continue to collect fees and the other dilemma is well, where do you suggest that we fill that $70 million in? What are we going to buy? The only thing we're going to buy is the dip. They have to deploy the capital. There is an abundance of liquidity all over the place. Anyways, we will discuss what the market did in details, along with all of the facts and the data that you need to know. But for now, I got a market to cover. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the green by 373.98 points or a gain of 1.13%. The Nasdaq closing in the green by 225.49 points or a gain of 1.67%. The S&P 500 closing in the green by 58.04 points or a gain of 1.44%. And what about the sector's performances for the day? Leading the pack at number one and capturing the gold medal, communications services aka facebook and google number two capturing the silver medal oh how ironic basic materials and a number three for the bronze technology meanwhile the laggard of the day the only one by the way is energy energy closing in the red the only sector of the market closing in the red and the reason is we saw crude oil futures diving lower on expectations of higher inventory but as you can see, there is no theme whatsoever. Or is there? Perhaps stick around for the heat map analysis. We will dig in more. But for now, we're moving on to the futures market performance for the day. Crude oil closing in the red. The WTI Brent down about 4% apiece. Meanwhile, in softs futures, lumber closing in the green along with sugar and coffee. But we saw declines in OJ, coca, and cotton. What about metals? Here comes Mr. Copper closing big in the green, breaking the consolidation to the upside. We will discuss the chart of copper in details. But once again, the axis of inflation, lumber, copper, and grains. At least two of those closing in the green today. Oil is a fourth one in this uh, consideration. However, it's a weak one because there are many other factors impacting oil prices and oil prices have been rallying not on legitimate demand but expectations of upcoming demand and therefore when you are rallying based on expectations expect a lot of volatility and a lot of sensitivity to bad news but if you are in the case of copper rallying because of legitimate demand then the rally and the momentum higher is more sustainable and resilient we saw muted activities for gold silver platinum and palladium futures moving on to meats aka the new tech Lean hogs taking a break today, but massive gains for both live and feeder cattle futures. Oh, but how do I buy futures? I don't have futures trading in my broker. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Buy Tyson, Hormel, any company involved in producing and exporting meats. What about grains? Muted activities across the board. But we do have noticeable gains for soybean oil futures, closing at about half a percentage point to the upside. Moving on to the big casino, the options market, let's see what took place today. Last week on Thursday, we saw an uptick in volume specifically for Tesla, playing a positive reaction in the stock price after announcing the deliveries number. But we did not see a confirmation of that momentum today. We did not see the call options volume for Tesla we did not see a follow through and that could have implications on the stock price because the stock has been rallying solely based on gamma squeezes. The other question, looking at the volume overall for the most traded names, the volume is still well below usual. We're seeing more call options buying, but the overall volume remains below what we have been seeing since the March bottom. And that begs the question, where is the retail trader? Why isn't the retail trader playing the market right now? Is it a lack of ammo? Of course not. We just got new stimmies. So what is it? Is it due to a hesitant reaction? from the recent corrections in many names, or is it that the retail trader is stuck holding the bag in losing positions? 
Perhaps I do have the answer for this question in the headlines of the day segment. But for today, the hottest table in the casino, Apple, with about 1.4 million contracts, about 75.5% of those were calls. At number two, Tesla, with a little over 670,000 contracts, about 60% of those were calls. And at number three, Palantir, with a little over half a million contracts, about 84% of those were calls. Massive call options buying activities in Palantir. And what about the unusual trades that took place in the options market today? Starting with the ticker CCG. This is a Canadian uranium company, and the name rallied higher today because we saw a surge in uranium prices in this case they're betting for more gains to come by buying the 21 calls expiration date may 21st with expectations that the name will climb over 15 percent or more by the expiration date they paid about 76 cents a piece to enter this trade bringing the total all the way to 1.1 million dollars what about the trade for the ticker m for macy's they're making a bullish bid here by buying the 17 and a half calls expiration date april 25th excuse me april 23rd with expectations that macy's will rally over 11 percent by then they paid about 42 cents a piece to enter this trade which brought the total all the way to six hundred thousand dollars what about the trade for the ticker ama applied materials the name has been one of the hottest stocks to own impulsively rallying since last year and it continues to go higher and higher and higher due to the chip shortage AMAT happens to be one of these bullet stocks in the chip wars. So long as there is demand, you need to build more infrastructure to produce chips. AMAT gets to benefit anyways. And in this case, they're betting for more gains to come by buying the 175 calls expiration date, June 18th, with expectations that the name will rally over 22.5% by then. They paid about 3 bucks and 10 cents apiece to enter this trade, which brought the total all the way to 2.8 eight million dollars what about the trade for the ticker msft microsoft we've seen massive corrections in the market specifically in the technology sector leading the nasdaq to experience a correction but one of the biggest names in the nasdaq microsoft if you look at the chart nothing happened to microsoft microsoft along with google and facebook been actually gaining steam during the correction keep that thought in mind because we will revisit the subject during the heat map analysis but back to the trade they're buying the 262 and a half calls expiration date may 7th with expectations that microsoft would rally over five and a half percent by then they paid about two bucks and 60 cents a piece to enter this trade bringing the total all the way to 1.6 million dollars what about the trade for the ticker has hasbro no love for toys here they're making a bearish bet by buying the 87 puts expiration date april 30th with expectations that the name will drop over nine and a half percent by then and they paid about a buck and a quarter a piece to enter this trade bringing the total all the way to about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and lastly what about the trade for the ticker dmyd this is yet another spac that blasted higher today over 40 percent for whatever news who cares these people didn't learn from the cciv episode they need another example okay but here it is somebody's making a bullish bid here for more upside for dmyd by buying the 25 calls expiration date may 21st with expectations that the name will gain over 13 and a half percent by then they paid about two bucks and 40 cents a piece to enter the trade which brought the total all the way to 1.4 million dollars now the name is trading about seven percent to the downside after hours so expect a lot of volatility in this name moving on to the headlines that shape the day starting with macro news what else we got the ism services number and here it is much stronger than expected in March, surging to 63.7 versus the expectations of 59 and 55.3, which was the reading in the prior month. And this is a record number that we got, the highest on record. But here is the catch. Prices paid at the highest level 
since 2008. Once again, hello, inflation. But where is inflation? I don't see inflation. Where is it? I can't see it. I can hear it, but I can't see it. US ISM services index rose to the highest in records all the way back to 1997. And I was watching CNBC in the morning, not by choice, by the way, but because uh, Pornhub was down today. So I decided to watch financial porn instead. And you can almost hear the collective sigh of orgasm when they were talking about the ISM services number. But what they forgot to tell you is that a higher ISM services number is usually accompanied with inflation, resulting in lower stock market gains. As you can see from the chart, when we get a reading above 60 from the services ISM, the returns down 2% in the following three months and down 1% for the year. What about factory orders? Factory orders down in the month of February. And the reason is weather, bad weather. Notice that every time we get bad news, they blame it on the weather. And here are some more facts regarding inflation, specifically for automotive prices. We estimate commodity costs for automakers are up 80% or 1,200 bucks per vehicle year over year. This increase in cost should slowly impact automakers' results as contracts renew over the year. Oh, what a Debbie Downer. We don't care about that, bro. We don't care about profits or margins or any of that. Who cares? We care about EV optimism. Feed us uh, EV promises and we will chase your stock like a bunch of zombies, pushing it higher and higher and higher. Whether you deliver on your EV promises or not, we forgot to ask that question because we practice the donkey mentality of buying first and asking questions later. They are still chasing General Motors stock at these prices even though the CEO Mary Barra been dumping tens of millions of dollars worth of stock. Here's more inflation news for you. The value of US rental homes reached all-time highs. And as a result, you're seeing that the rent paid for these properties also increasing along with the value of the home. I don't know about you, but if my rent goes higher, that's inflation to me. What else, Debbie Downer? Got more uh, negative news for us? More inflation news? Yes, I got more for you. Here it is. The official U.S. inflation rate is at 1.5%. This is according to the CPI, a.k.a. the CPI. But in reality, not in La La Land and Fantasy Land that the Federal Reserve and the Bureau of Labor Statistics live in, or perhaps, uh, shall we say, the kitchen that they live in, commodity prices and expenses are rising rapidly. Oil up over 8%, steel up about 145%, lumber over 126%, copper over 50%. But hey, where is inflation? And even if there is inflation, it's transitory. And even if it is transitory, we got the tools, bro. And rest assured, if you are denying inflation and you don't believe that it is a risk for the market, you're going to ally in the Federal Reserve because after all of the inflation data are presented for you, he was a Fed uh, creature, Mr. from the Cleveland Fed, and the zombie that she is issued a few dumb statements, not concerned with the rise in bond yields, and there is nothing the Fed should react to. Okay, let's pump yields to 2% and see how the Fed will react. How about 2.5%? All of a sudden we go from uh, look at me, I'm tough, to look at me, I'm shitting my pants. And here is more from Mr. Expect high reading on inflation in the next couple of months, but don't expect high inflation reading to be sustained. Why? Do you have a magic wand that can erase inflation out of the system? Do you have a rewind button where we can just uh, go back and fix all of that inflation we created? No, of course not. The only insurance policy they got is we are in control, 100% control. So calm down, put your blindfold on and come back at the blackjack table and double down while the dealer is showing an ace. Because... We got the tools. And you know what? The market might not be concerned about inflation anymore. But what about the risk of higher taxes? Is the market also shaking that one off? Because here it is. Biden is proposing increasing corporate taxes to 28%. In addition, doubling the taxation on foreign gains. But today I heard from uh, CNBC, the experts, 
saying that I shouldn't worry so much about higher taxes. Just put your blindfold on and get back to the table. Because even if Biden wants to raise taxes, he won't be able to. Because here it is. We talked about this before. Right around the Georgia elections. Mansion optimism. We're not talking about a fancy house. We're talking about Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia. Of course, Senator Joe Manchin is saying, I'm okay with increasing corporate taxes to 25%, not 28 Of course, uh, these investors who are placing a lot of uh, hope that Manchin optimism will alleviate the market from any concerns regarding higher taxes, perhaps you're not familiar with the Democratic Party, which is pretty much run like a mob organization and either you get in line or you're out and uh, nancy will give mansion a whip and he will get in with the program but rest assured and don't sell your stocks yet because joe biden has some assurances for you biden says he does not think higher corporate taxes would harm the u.s economy and now we have the godmother the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. And Janet Yellen is proposing a global minimum tax on corporations. Of course, they're scrambling all over the place with all of this higher taxes talk because they realize that what they've been doing so far is not sustainable, running massive budget deficits. You're not going to be able to just rack in more debt by the printing machine. So taxes will have to go higher across the board, not just for corporations, not just for the wealthy, but also for the middle class. And any politician who says otherwise is lying to you. Anybody who says that taxes will only go higher for the rich or for corporations only is lying to you because we have trillions of dollars of budget deficit and taxing the rich and corporations alone is not going to cut it. So they are scrambling all over the place because they have and must increase corporate taxes to finance the budget deficit. But pushing corporate taxes to 28%, 30% will put these corporations at global disadvantage. This is exactly why Janet Yellen is trying this pathetic attempt to whip the world into a minimum global tax, which will never happen, by the way. And then we have another piece of news impacting the technology sector of the market. Here is Justice Thomas of the Supreme Court suggesting that we should regulate tech companies as we regulate utilities companies. But of course, the market was not paying attention at all today look at the volume in the market what you saw today is not sustainable moving on to market sentiment news what about this whole bill wong archegos capital saga the true magnitude of the losses suffered by archegos capital could exceed our imagination reports indicating losses of over 100 billion dollars I'm not sure if this is real or not. All I know that they got the check mark from Twitter, so it must be real. More in sentiment news. The corporate grade debt ETF from BlackRock suffered its biggest one day outflow ever at the end of last week, nearly $1.7 billion. That brings its year to date outflows to $12.2 billion. And where is the money rotating to? It is going to junk bonds the junk bond mania and therefore you're seeing the hyg jumping higher again why are they buying junk bonds assuming that papa jerome will buy it from them at a higher price once again trusting jerome powell and what about the valuations in the market the pe ratios here it is surpassing the dot-com bubble the dot-com bubble looks like a baby to where we're at right now but according to the experts i listened to over at tiktok it's a good entry point bro and what about the 21st century's tulip mania you know jp morgan been bearish on bitcoin but here they are capitulating and now they are turning bullish on Bitcoin. So the question is, should you take your gains now that JP Morgan is capitulating? It's up to you. What do I care? JP Morgan. JP Morgan. Reels Bitcoin price prediction as Bitcoin and crypto market surges. The price target is $130,000.
But the question of the day is, where did the retail trader go? Retail traders, absent from the market, no action in the options market, no action in uh, meme stocks, mania stocks, plug power, palantir bro. What's going on here? Retail investors have gone into hibernation the past couple of weeks. Driving the recent pullback, individual investors and analysts said, is a series of factors, including concerns about the volatility among growth stocks. A group in which small investors tend to be heavily invested. Since February 12, when the technology-heavy Nasdaq composite hit its most recent record, individual investors' favorites including Tesla, Neo, and Apple each fallen more than 9%. So once again, the question is, are they holding the bag already or are they just afraid to roll the dice again? Perhaps waiting for a better opportunity to enter the market. But maybe we have a clue when we do the investigation. Perhaps uh, here is a hint of what happened to retail traders in response to Shamath Palate Potato Tequila. I think you should go back to your own stocks first. So many people who place their trust in you and you sell them out. And of course, uh, Shamath Predatoria answered by saying, stop crying and do your own work. You see what happens when the predators, the pumpers, the cult leaders unleash their scams all over the place, selling you a lottery ticket to cash in your dumb money. We have a lot of dumb money in the pockets of predators, the likes of Shamath Palate Potato Tequila. Moving on to corporate specific news. What about Delta? Delta Airlines canceled about 100 flights. Sunday due to staff shortages and it opened up middle seats a month earlier than expected. What about Facebook? Facebook data on 533 million users re-emerges online for free. So if you've been waiting to stalk that ex of yours, now you can do it for free. What about Diamond Hands, INC? GameStop files with the SEC to sell 3.5 million shares. Finally, they decided to milk this mania. AMC did it, Cruises, American Airlines, and now finally GameStop milks the donkeys to score big. And what about Google? aka Alphabet. And we love Alphabet. We love Google, don't we? Google is replacing Oracle Finance software and they are going with SAP. What about Ford? Ford been doing significant progress with the Mac E release. It's a big hit, massive sales number already. And the battery technology that Ford has adapted is becoming more competitive of that of Tesla, aka the souffle. And of course, the culties are not happy at all because the success of the Mustang Mac E pierces their faith that Tesla is a monopoly and the battery technology is. 20 years ahead of competitors, there is no way they will catch up all of that garbage that is fed to them by Tesla Witch, Kathy Wood, and the likes. And as you know, the culties are a nasty bunch if you ever try to engage with them, specifically if you are armed with facts. Tesla culties send Mustang Mac E owner death threats. Wow, what a classy bunch. They're very confident they have to bully everyone who begs to differ with their opinion. And lastly, we have more from the clown over at Wedbush called uh, Dan Ivis regarding the souffle. And he finally decided to issue a buy recommendation and upgraded Tesla stock. Of course, he had a clownish, cartoonish price target to begin with, and he decided to up that even more. Tesla stock upgraded by Wedbush after quote-unquote Paradigm Changer Delivery Numbers Paradigm Changer aka Super Thank you. Moving on to the heat map analysis and here it is do we have a specific theme today of course not the notable loser here the energy sector specifically the smaller oil and gas producers therefore i keep telling you stick with the big producers exxon chevron bp contrast that with the ad performance from the rest of the inflationary trade financials industrials materials defensives all at performing today in addition to an ad performance from the reopening stocks the airlines hotels casinos cruises restaurants etc but we also saw an ad performance from the big cap technology stocks apple microsoft amazon facebook google closing with gains for the day and lifting the nasdaq higher but you have to peel the onion to see the true picture was this a reigniting of flows into growth stocks or 
or high multiple stocks? Or is this just an involuntary inflow into technology ETFs led by the big technology stocks, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, because there is no other choice to buy for now, meaning pumping them higher to satisfy allocation requirements for fund managers, not because they are bullish on these stocks. That remains to be seen because we know that the recent buying in the Nasdaq was not from retail traders and investors. It has been done by the professionals, the hedge funds, the passive funds and the likes. And perhaps the themes analysis will shed more light on the subject. So let's do that starting with the reopening trade. What do we see here? Gains across the board. Good day for reopening stocks. Sizable gains indicating that the interest is still there to buy these names. Let's contrast that with the inflationary trade. Also sizable gains overall indicating strong momentum. Now the Nasdaq finished significantly higher today. So what do you say the deflationary trade must have outperformed significantly today, right? Well, here it is. The deflationary stocks, mixed picture, but there are no solid gains here. Meaning, we have certain stories. American Airlines is part of the reopening stocks, for example. Tesla is rallying on the heels of the deliveries number. But if this was a reallocation of risk, meaning risk on mode, let's buy the high multiple names, growth stocks, also meaning that the movement in the Nasdaq today is legitimate, if that was the case, then how come the hottest stocks in the market, names like Snapchat, Okta, Zoom, Peloton, Shopify, DocuSign, even Square to a certain extent, underperformed, meaning that the rally in the NASDAQ today was basically based on the big cap technology names, in addition to semiconductor names. But the breadth of the rally in the NASDAQ was not as healthy as, say, S&P 500. The S&P 500 had the majority of sectors rallying today. The Nasdaq, different story, carried single-handedly by the big cap technology stocks. And to dive more into the subject, let's move on to the charts analysis. Starting with the SPY, 15 minutes chart. We have another gap higher overnight, indicating more action from passive funds and foreign buyers, not participation from the retail side. And we saw this phenomena, by the way, of reallocations back in November, right after the elections. And you saw this gapping formation, just like what you're seeing right now in the Nasdaq and the S&P 500. The difference is, is back then that was confirmed by retail traders following the action. But this time around, the retail trader is nowhere to be found. The sustainability of this gapping action overnight depends on retail traders and investors picking up the action during the trading hours. Technically speaking, what do we see here in the SPY? We are all-time highs, breaking out, and the sky's the limit for now. But remember, we're leaving a lot of gaps here, and these, the majority of them at least, will have to be filled. So we will look for those if we have a sign for a reversal. For now, the series of higher lows goes on. If we make a lower low, then the recent leg higher has been exhausted. Moving on to the daily chart of the continuous contract of the SPY. What do we see here? We had the bull flag consolidation just underneath the very important resistance level, 3,960. And now we have the impulsive breakout higher. We've been waiting and waiting for the impulsive breakout above 3,960. In a typical sharding behavior, once you have the breakout, you rally impulsively for a day, two, maybe three. But then you have to go back and recheck the same resistance level, now support, you have to recheck it for support, and then bouncing higher. And that is always a bullish signal, retesting the support line, and then bouncing higher. So the expectations are that we will see a pullback in the SPY to go all the way back to 3,960, retest the line for support, and then decide whether to bounce higher or not. Now remember, we could have a day or two left in the breakout rally before going back to 3,960 and recheck for support. What about the Qs? 15 minutes perspective. We have another night and another gap higher. We are now well above the support 223 and the center of gravity 313. Yet we have many gaps to fill and those gaps will guide us when we see a reversal. When do you see a reversal? It could happen two ways. Number one, an overnight gap lower. The other way is the quote unquote gap and crap 
What does that mean? It means gapping higher overnight and then selling off once the market starts its normal trading hours. Zooming out to the daily perspective of the continuous contract of the Nasdaq. We had the reverse head and shoulder formation. But we said that that is intact so long as we don't close daily below 12,766 and that indeed played to the upside. The original destination was reaching the purple trend line but we have overdone that going all the way to the very important resistance level of 13,599 closing slightly below that number. It is highly unlikely that we're gonna blast above that number easily without facing any resistance and the ultimate test is how will the big cap technology stocks react at that level? We're already there. What will be the reaction of these stocks once we see normal volume once again? That is the million dollars question. And here is another way you could look at the chart from the perspective of market symmetry. The behavior of the chart during this correction versus the September 2020 correction. We saw a head and shoulder formation playing to the upside as we're seeing right now. And then we saw a reversal once the retail trader decided to join the rally. Will the retail trader join this bounce for now if we do indeed reverse lower? That would be the ultimate test for the sustainability of this bounce. Moving on to the IWM. Gapping higher overnight but also underperforming the rest of the indices. The Russell pretty much closed flat. We do have a baby formation of a bear flag. It is not significant yet. It's only happening in the perspective of this chart which happens to be 30 minutes. So we have to zoom out to a bigger index for small caps, the RUT, the Russell 2000, from a daily perspective to see if we have any legitimate signs for a reversal. We are still in the series of higher highs and higher lows. We have the level of 2264 as a line in the sand to close above from a weekly perspective. Doing so will erase any potential for a bearish outcome. What about the dollar index? We talked about a reversal imminent in the dollar index once we reached the trend line which happens to be resistance in or around the level of 93 we also talked about the movement in freeport mcmoran copper prices and gold as an indicator for an upcoming reversal in the dollar index and indeed this is what we're seeing right now it is not damaging the overall bullish trend of this leg because we haven't made a lower high or a lower low yet but we could be on the way of doing just that but you know how it is the canary in the coal mine gold gold will let us know right away what direction the US dollar is thinking of taking. Here is gold. Muted activities today. Gold not celebrating the move lower in the US dollar. Could that be that gold is saying watch out here because the dollar will resume rallying again? Or is gold still concerned about the movement in treasury yields? Because remember, gold has two enemies right now working against it. Number one, the rise in the US dollar. Number two, the rise in treasury yields. So before gold starts to rally, it needs to ask two questions. What is the dollar thinking about doing? What are yields thinking about doing? Moving on to copper. And remember what we said a few weeks ago regarding copper in discussing the bearish outcome for copper. It could go down all the way to the trend line and that would be a decline of about 13% or so. Are we on that trajectory? And if we are, the inflation expectations are going lower. Yields are going to retreat we will see the technology sector continuing to catch a bit. And this is exactly what happened. Of course, yields did not retreat, but copper went all the way down to the support line, the trend line, and managed to bounce higher. Copper is one of the axes of inflation. Copper going higher will push inflation expectations higher, meaning that yields are expected to rise higher. And we know that the Nasdaq doesn't like the rise in treasury yields. Just something to think about. What about Bitcoin? What's going on here? No major update here. We continue to watch the negative divergence in the RSI and whether that's going to be corrected soon or not because correcting the negative divergence will be the fuel needed to ignite this engine to rally once again. But I'm not playing Bitcoin via buying actual Bitcoin. I did it via buying Riot blockchain calls. And today in the morning, the name was trading in the red and that was an opportunity to hop in the trade. 
and I added a little more to my current position because Bitcoin was trading higher. And right away, you saw Riot rallying over 10% today, along with other crypto proxies. And by the way, I got a lot of questions regarding Riot versus Mara. What's going on here? Which one do you buy? It doesn't matter. Who cares? They're trading in synchrony. And recently, retail traders been favoring Mara a little more because YouTubers been pushing that name. But for me, I did the math comparing the options together. And for me, for the specific trade I entered, Riot blockchain made more sense. But it doesn't matter what you pick. They're all going to trade in synchrony so long as Bitcoin is trading higher. We have the wedge consolidation in Riot blockchain going to the upper limit of the wedge will be an opportunity to take profits from this particular trade. Now, what about yields? Because the Nasdaq rallied significantly higher. So yields must be down, right? Yields actually trading higher. That once again begs the question about the sustainability of the rally in the Nasdaq that started last week. It's not only low volume, it's also not supported or confirmed by a decline in treasury yields. What about the VIX? Yesterday, we talked about 17.3. What a coincidence it was. The VIX closing last week at a reading of 17.3, and the gap left open since the VIX exploded higher last year happened to be 17.3. So that begs the question, is the VIX ready to rally now that it closed the gap it's behind it now is it time for the vix to rally and if the vix is going to rally then the s p 500 will decline now if i'm reading the tea leaves correctly the vix rallying today closing in the green and we also have the S&P 500 closing in the green what's up with that could it be that the VIX is about to rally a little higher perhaps recapturing the level of 20 which will come hand in hand with the S&P 500 futures revisiting 3960 for support to me that seems a very reasonable expectation what about apple once again gapping higher and recapturing 125 remember two things number one as apple goes so will the nasdaq apple trading higher today so it didn't matter what mania name you owned which was trading lower today the nasdaq managed to rally because as apple goes so will the nasdaq here's the other thing to remember apple's chart is technically sound what does that mean it doesn't like to leave gaps open and unfilled we have a lot of gaps to fill here from the recent run in apple stock and breaking above the resistance of 125 also paves the way for apple to go back to 125 retested for support and perhaps we could be met with failure there for example here's another time not so far in the past matter of fact a few days ago where apple managed to gap higher all the way closing above 125 and everybody assumed that apple is out of the woods the problem is the retesting failed so the question here is will this time be different did the chart spend enough time with the center of gravity 120 that now it has enough support to retest 125 and bounce higher to build on on the recent bounce that remains to be seen but the retest of 125 has to be done in successful manner this is a chart that doesn't like to rally based on overnight gapping moving on to tesla what's going on here gapping higher today to the tune of over five percent but closing well below the highs it went in a zigzag up and down up and down and the number remains 720 we're over 679 now and the next challenge is 720 is tesla Tesla recharging and ready to gap higher again tomorrow or was that too much too fast for Tesla are we going back to check for support if we are going to check for support what that level might be you guessed it 679 former resistance becomes current support and here is the bullish scenario what happens is Tesla goes down rechecks 679 perhaps going all the way to close the gap from the first candle of this bounce and then rebounding higher that is the bullish scenario what about the bearish scenario the bearish scenario says we could be seeing a double top formation we go all the way back close the gap as i'm highlighting for you and then failing to bounce higher that would be a confirmation for lower prices to come and before i move on i want to present you with food for thought number one the contrast between the vtv the value etf and the iwf the growth etf here is the performance since the november election value has been outperforming significantly but in the recent weeks we're seeing growth catching some momentum yet value has not reversed yet we know that in the current 
macro outlook of rising yields and inflation expectations, even Fed personalities are now admitting that yes, we will see inflation. Inflation will go higher, above 2%, meaning the Treasury yields will also go above 2%. One of these two is lying. Is it the VTV, the value ETF in baby blue, or is it the growth ETF in orange, the IWF? One of these two will continue to outperform. Either the IWF catches up with the VTV, reverse the outperformance, or the VTV will continue to outperform. We will see a pullback in the IWF to maintain that underperformance. Let me know what you think. Food for thought number two, Apple versus Microsoft. Apple in blue, Microsoft in orange. The performance since the beginning of the year. Microsoft up over 14%, Apple down about 3% or so. Why is this important? We're talking about a NASDAQ correction, a sell-off in technology. But if you look at the chart of Microsoft, nothing happened. Where is the correction when it comes to Microsoft? So why is Apple being treated worse than Microsoft? Is it that the valuation is more absurd in Apple? Perhaps, but not by much. So what is the reason behind the sell-off in Apple? The reason is Apple is always treated as an ATM to pull cash from during market corrections. So the question is, did the market mean to punish the high multiple high valuation names and it had to take the Nasdaq down with it but the intention wasn't to hit big technology big cap stocks including Apple but it had to happen meaning will Apple starts to play catch up with Microsoft that means that we have a bullish run for Apple or is Microsoft experiencing lagging reaction or will start trading lower along with Apple just something to think about and now moving on to the conclusion of this video once again, when will we see a decisive break one way or the other between value versus growth, reopening versus stay at home, inflationary versus deflationary stocks, the battle of the routes, which route would the market take? Which route will the market favor, at least? That will not be abundantly clear without knowing what the next move from the 10-year Treasury yield is. Is what we're seeing right now in yields a uh, consolidation building of energy to continue to run higher if that is the case the yields will explode higher the nasdaq will be out of favor again or is the break will be to the downside in yields and that will mean the nasdaq technology growth back in favor what would be the catalyst for yields to drive lower we know what the catalyst is for yields to rise higher more inflation expectations and every piece of data macro data that we got since last week pointing to higher inflation. But what is the catalyst for yields to dive lower? This is a question that every investor and trader right now has to ask themselves. Which way will yields, to simplify it for you, forget about growth and value and all of that, which way will yields go, higher or lower, and why? And if you can answer that question, and you are confident with your answer, then you will be able to trade the market accordingly. For example, if you are confident that yields will dive lower for fill-in-the-blank reason, whatever it is, you have to find out that reason for yourself and ask the question, is it convincing enough or not? But if it is, then you should be betting on the NASDAQ to continue to go higher. And for the mania names, the growth stocks, to rebound and catch a bid once again. If you're not, in this case I'm not, I do believe that yields will continue to break higher and that energy will be released to the upside. That means that you should be buying the dip in the inflationary trade and fading the rip in technology, growth, and stay-at-home stocks. Or perhaps you don't believe in this uh, route theory that the market has to choose one way or the other. The market can rally all together. NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P, inflationary, deflationary, doesn't matter. Every sector of the market will rally impulsively higher together. Perhaps that's what you believe. Let me know in the comments and why. Anyways, that's all I got for you tonight and I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button and follow me on social media.